these are all the serviceable parts that are going to come off. I've laid out all the new parts here that are going to go on. Now these are all slightly different, I thought there would be, but there's all subtle differences with these, so just make sure you do get the right one. Um, there seems to be one, two, three, four different versions of them, so make sure you get the right one. I'm sure there's a reason for it all, and uh, this one first off. You can tell by the indentations on them compared to the replacement ones, they're all slightly different. So, all I'm going to do is line them up and see whether they line up as well. Which, let's say, that one does. And I think these are the parts on mine that aren't working too well in first and second gear. These are like a braking system to slow it down when you do change gear. I think that's what's shot on mine. So, it's first one on. I need to keep a pile of all the junk bits. One down, uh, several more to go. So one of the methods I found quite uh, useful was to take the old bearing. Um, I've taken the collars off them, or the cages, as you can see. This is actually one of the bearings that was sitting on there. Let me take this one here because it looks more like it but that used to be for example on there so I've taken this one off, taken the actual outer cage off and all the bearing parts and what I did I ran a, let me find it, I ran a Dremel down and cut a relief hole or slot out of the ring and then I would use this to go back on and use this as a drift I was able to then use a punch and to hammer this slowly into position so I didn't damage the bearing. This would then fit exactly onto the same face as this bearing on here for example. It wouldn't touch the cage and wouldn't damage it and uh, I was able to bash that on and because I got the slot in there it's also allowed me to remove it quite easily it's got that relief slot and that really worked well rather than heating them heating them for me was a absolute disaster absolute waste of time so I did that for most of them the internal bearing let me have a look on the this is the input shaft and you do need to remove that internal track that's in there that's actually the new one that's there now and again for that one I just used a slide hammer and the three log legged prong. So in order to put it back in I took the old one out which is this one and I just you can see I've ground all the way around the outside of this just to make it slightly smaller than the actual hole it was going in and then I used this again as my drift to hammer it in and I think I put a socket or a bar or something over it as well but uh, by using the old bearings or actual tracks it makes it a lot easier to hammer them in and you won't do any damage so that's what i found so far and it's going back together okay but slowly now again this thing it does have tolerances on you are going to need uh, your feeler gauges and there has to be pretty much no play at all once you've got your bearing pushed on this should not move at all, all of these, if you get any movement in these it's going to destroy itself within no time. Um, so get your feeler gauges out. Again with the actual, uh, these breast bulk rings, there's tolerances in there, there has to be a minimum distance. Uh, so you need to check that out. Again on this side of the bearing, which I still need to put on, uh, you need to be able to have a tolerance or very minute, I'm not sure what it is, again you'll have to check the manual for that, um, but is there any movement on, in there that's noticeable, anything over half a millimetre to say, uh, then you've got problems and you need to make sure it's a lot tighter than that. And one thing I've got messed up and the reason this bearing's currently off is this top hat set up on here. Now the reason this bearing is not on is because I messed up. I actually put the bearing on and then realised I had too much movement and it was because I put this top hat on the wrong way. This is supposed to be a spacer and I thought it was more of a bushing and I put it that way around. And then when I come to put the bearing on there was so much slop 
in this assembly um, so just make sure this top hat one does go on the correct way it goes on to me that's going on the wrong way that you would naturally put it on and I think I span this round um, at some point so I'll put it on wrong but you want to go on that way and then when you do get your bearing on it ends up being a good tight fit and you can see the bearing fits right up to the end so that's what you're looking for on that end and that's what I messed up the rest of it um, is the checking the float really and getting the shims in to make the float correct uh, which is all going in the casing which I'm going to do next probably tomorrow and hopefully I'll get the float done first of all for the main shaft and also for the lay shaft you have to do them independent of each other I've got some shim spaces in there so I'll get that sorted out so these are the bulk rings that I've taken off and I think this is what was causing my problem um, there's not horrendous wear on them but you can see the teeth have been misformed they've been damaged somehow uh, I'm not too sure about the inner part of them and uh, the gap I think the, this edge is also worn down a fair bit difficult to tell looking at them but there was a, a certain amount of difference between this one and the new ones when I compared them so it's definitely worth changing those things out and these they're all there's about three or four different types of these things and you can tell them you have a look here you can tell the differences you can see on that one it's got different sort of slots on them you can see that is more of a trapezoid slot on there and this one let me get in there it's just like a normal and that's how you identify which one goes on where and you can only put them on one way don't force them again you can see the teeth on this one quite badly done in so hopefully this will solve my problems and uh, again I haven't had a great inspection of them I just think generally they're uh, worn out just at that age and um, we'll have a closer inspection when I can uh, apart from that it's going back together okay finally this is the box I've repainted this side of it and uh, it's come up pretty good so I've done the centre plate and the actual extension casing that's all been degreased, cleaned up, repainted and the other one down there has also been cleaned up but not painted that's like an aluminium anyway so I don't want to bother painting that we'll need etch priming and everything so I'm not going to bother with that one so I just need to sort the pump out in that and we should be good to go with that one as well and uh, I'm running out of things to do on it hopefully the next couple of days I can get this all back together and put back on the car with the bell housing here I've got a bit of uh, new hardware these I'm going to use for these are 40 millimeters long and you're going to need these as slave bolts when you come to do the end flow you can't use the normal bolt in order to pull these together um, I'll show you the assembly when I got that put together but you're going to need these these are about 40 mil long you probably get away with 35 as long as they're threaded all the way um, and these are going to pass through and get bolted down to the actual extension and then hopefully we'll be able to get the end float sorted out on that and get some shims in there to get it all looking good right r380 gearbox assembly uh, i'm not going to go through every single stage of it this thing has proven to be a lot harder than i thought it was ever going to be um, for me, because I've not seen one of these done before, if you've done it once before it is going to be pretty easy but there's so much trial and error involved because I'm not sure how it goes back together. I've looked at pictures, I've looked at videos, not relevant to putting an R380 together but just where it shows you the internals of them and I've had to kind of cobble together how it goes back together myself even though I took pictures and video of it there are certain parts which are just a little bit ambiguous so um, I'm going to give a few pointers as to what I've learned from putting mine back together and when I say put back together it's not quite there I'm waiting for another steak nut because I've had to take mine off again for about the fifth time I have put this thing together about four, ten times I've never got to the stage of actually putting the front case part on yet 
um, fortunately. So, a few pointers. Here we go. First off, bearings. So we look at the main shaft first of all, bearings on it, um, just to give you an idea of what you're looking at and it might hopefully clear up a few of the instances that I was not sure about. Um, this is main shaft, this end small bearing only goes on one place, you can't get that wrong. So that one goes on there and then the race for this actually goes on the input shaft which currently is in here. And there's my input shaft raised that corresponds with it. Now on the input shaft there is this bearing and that is the largest bearing of the kit so just look for the biggest thing you can find as regards a bearing and that is where your race is going to go. Um, I'm just doing this to clarify a bit because it was all a bit vague for me when I came to do it. So that's that end sorted out. This end is the one where you set your float and you can see I've got my spacers on there already set and um, the bearing that goes with it, I'm not sure if this can or cannot go in other places but it goes with that kind of shell and I think it can only go there because of the diameter. If not, it's not that deep. If you look at this one, it's not deep compared to that one. You can see the depth of them, so you can identify it by that. So that should clarify that one a little bit. Um, they all look the same after a little bit and you start questioning whether you've got them on the right place or not. Next one is the lay shaft, which is this guy here. Let's start at this end, the one with the actual shaft on, uh, exposed. And again, this is where you set your shims up and um, I'll come back to the shims later on. But again, it's that size one and this one is slightly deeper bearing than the one on that end again I think they are the same diameter so it is possible to get them the wrong way around but if you notice that's the deeper one of the two that's a shallow one and if you look there the, that's the amount of exposed area you should be getting if you put the deeper one on there you'd have too much of the bearing sticking out from the actual shaft so hopefully that will be a guide and clarify that as regards where they go that is the other end of the layer shaft which fits in there it is kind of a loose fit that you don't have to bash it in mine actually fell out at first with the old one and um, so that shouldn't be a struggle you don't have to bash that thing out at all and then the other one, this is the centre plate, it has no bearing in, pushed in. This is the ones where you set the end floats on both of them, so that's pretty straightforward. Next up we have this one here. Again, I wasn't sure which way around all of this stuff goes, so make note of which way around it goes. This is the oil feed, you need to keep that, it's not new, it's not renewable or it's not in part of the kit so make sure you keep that and make sure you get those bearings the right way around as well. Now these bearings are actually come with the collars will have gone on the ends of these shafts, you'll remember of taking them off earlier. I thought I was going to have to renew or use the old ones that came off, I've got a stock of all the bits I've taken off over here. And I thought, as the old ones here, that I used the puller on. Um, I didn't realise these were part of the bearing kit. Um, these are actually the equivalent of the shells, so they should go with the bearings. And these will be going on to this shaft once it's all reassembled. So hopefully that sorts out or clarifies a little bit the bearing. It's a bit confusing to me, I've got to say. Right, next up we have the actual colour and selectors. Now when you're taking yours apart make sure you know so you can see these slots in here. That'll have one slot on, that'll have two. I don't know what it actually indicates, all I know is it needs to go on the same way. They may all tow the same way. The ones may go one way, twos may go another. I haven't really looked into that. But um, if you take photos and videos as you're taking it apart just make sure you know which way around those slots go. 
some of them can only go one way anyway but it certainly helps uh, with those and I think some of the actual gears as well I think they also you can't really see on there but I'm pretty sure they have slots on as well again most of them do go only one way but um, just make note of any slots or markings on them to make it clear now then this is where it gets a little bit weird because these markings here are supposed to dictate which gear they go against so got five mark this is really a bad example but just go with it uh, it's got five markings which should go towards the fifth gear if you look at let me dig another one out here and it may make it a bit clearer there we go you can see on here the three markings and that means it goes against third gear which third that's third second and that's first gear and if you look at first gear you will see on here there is another marking these have to go a specific way around to work properly so make sure that you do keep them the right way around now first and third they work fine fifth gear for me this one is a bit of a problem child mine is a KL gearbox R380 a later version um, but on mine for some reason this fifth gear actually points towards the reverse gear not fifth I'll show it installed later on um, when I've come to put this all back together but just make note of how yours is I've looked at a few pictures online and quite a few of these I don't know whether it's to do with the LT77 gearbox using the same parts because I think on an LT77 not having the reverse gear as a synchro mesh maybe it's to do with that but I just know for a fact this on mine even though it says in the manual it should go towards fifth gear it actually goes towards the reverse gear I hope that makes sense because it didn't to me and I was assembling it one way and it just was not working I couldn't figure it out for ages this mesh wasn't moving smoothly because I knew it came off with one marker um, let me have a look it came off on the markers I'd noted and then when I tried to put in the mesh going towards the actual fifth gear it wasn't working it just would not be smooth action at all as you can see it's quite smooth moving on there it just wouldn't move the other one I couldn't even get it on uh, properly without giving it a bit of a knock with a mallet